all right ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another episode of herb sessions i am your host herb <laughs> and today i have a very cool guest with me ricky go ahead and introduce yourself hello my name is ricky <laughs> <laughs> all right all right all right <laughs> cool uh before we get an episode like i always mention um everything can be found on youtube now everything is linked uh, you'll find me facebook youtube instagram just type in herb sessions and you'll find everything where you need to be all all on youtube so i'll link everything is in the description below the audio version and whatever else uh, is intriguing i guess dude what's up how you been i'm good how you doing i'm doing all right man how's covid treating you uh it sucks <laughs> <laughs> just the whole state of the world yeah um i actually had it oh you got it huh yeah i got it like around july 20th bring that mic down like like that and then point it up oh, okay yeah there you go um but yeah got it like around july 20th um okay hold up oh, sorry oh yeah dude who's that dude I don't know. It's like my tile actually. Sean now. Puffy Combs, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um. So you actually got it, dude. How long did it last? Did you lose your sense of taste and all that? Yeah, I yeah. couldn't taste for like three weeks. Um. Yeah, I was out of work for about a month. But the first, the first two or three days was um. Actually, the worst. Like I was bedridden. Literally couldn't move, which is in pure agony. Um, and then lost sense of taste, smell, <laughs> touch. <laughs> <laughs> touch, senses, my soul. Yeah, just, just <laughs> everything was just terrible once I got it. Um, couldn't go to work. Was out of work for a month. Damn. So yeah, it's pretty bad. I had a, I actually had a pretty bad case um, compared to most people. Yeah, some people who have it didn't even know they got it. So you you definitely had it, knew you had it. Yeah, I knew I had it uh, within like the second day. Um, uh, it's just terrible. Like you could feel the sickness in you. You just feel, it just feels gross. You know, yeah, you just feel yeah. terrible. Um, so it is real. I know some people may think it's just made up, but I actually had it, you know. And um, wouldn't lie about it. <laughs> Can't lie the the symptoms. <laughs> Damn. Well, I'm glad you're doing better now. And you're back at work. Thank you, sir. Um. So the reason I wanted you to come out here, you're quite the music producer, my man. Oh, and, thank you. And um, I think there's a lot of young people out there. I mean, we're not old, but people who are trying to get into it, um, trying to plant, make their mark on the world in the music world. How how did you get into it, man? How did it start? Where are you at now? Like, let's give me the rundown. Yeah, so I won't say I was always into music. Mm -hmm. um, went to a performing arts school, <clears throat> elementary school. Yeah. So from a young age, I was like singing in choirs, doing plays and stuff. The, the school was literally called the Academy of Performing Arts. So it was based around music instruments singing uh that sort of thing so that was my like my first exposure to music mm -hmm. but even at a young age i wasn't i wasn't passionate about it um it was just something that i just did you know i played uh, the baritone which is like a big tuba looking thing mm -hmm. in the sixth grade um played trumpet from fourth to fifth grade um and just kind of did it because I had to, because it was part of school. It was not necessarily something that I wanted to do. Yeah. It was just I had to do it. Um, uh. So that was like my first exposure to, to music. And then, you know, I was always listening to like the Chili Peppers. Um, I liked music, but I wasn't really passionate about it until about like 12. When I turned, yeah. when I turned 12, my dad got me an acoustic guitar, my first guitar ever. Yeah, I forget what brand it was. It was kind of like a beat up black acoustic guitar, and um, so he got me that. And then I had a buddy named Jesse Webb, and he 
he knew the strings. So he, he taught me um, eat and drink good broth every day. And that's kind of like how I remember yeah, the yeah. strings. Yeah, I, mine was elephants something. I forget. Elephants yeah. are good. I don't know. Yeah, but there's always like a trick to know all the strings. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like once you know the strings, then you can kind of learn chords. And then you can, you, you know, once you know the basics, you can kind of get more complex. Um, so I learned the strings. And then I just, I don't know, I guess I've always had kind of a natural rhythm. Just yeah. I have kind of a good tempo. Uh, I think that's just natural. And so I was able to play the guitar and strum and everything would be on beat uh -huh. and would like sing to myself, but I didn't know how to sing. So just be like falsetto, just me just hitting like yeah. high notes and stuff. And <laughs> I used to sing for my sister and nice. it used to just be terrible. I just, <laughs> I remember Damn. knowing it wasn't good, but just stepping out of my box and, and, um, just going for it. Yeah, just going for it, just having Damn, fun. I was and, the same way when I uh, when I was in bands. I thought I could sing. I sounded horrible. Really? Yeah. I mean, I can't sing now, but I have a little more control over my voice. I, you kind of control it with more of your belly than you do your throat. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I get where you're coming from, but you just kept going and going and going. Yeah. That's I good, just, man. Yeah, I was just having fun. Just, um, It was just cool, like... I forget the songs I would sing. I was I was really into this band called Never Shot Never when I was like 13 and he made acoustic music and then started playing the ukulele. Um so I just kind of I wanted to be him, you know, so like I kind of copied him like I would do covers of his songs and I didn't know how to sing at that time. So I was just freestyling. I mean, I still don't really know how to sing. I can hold a note, but um I I hear you in there, dude. I hear you. What's yeah. that one song you sing? Um, it's a wonderful world. <laughs> yeah. <Ooh. laughs> See, like when you get older, you can. It's. I don't know. For me, like, um, I go about it like in. I don't want to say more mature way, but more controlled. Like my singing is more controlled. Mm -hmm. Whereas when I was younger, I didn't know about diaphragms, falsetto. I didn't know any of these things. So I was just like having fun with it. Yeah. So I was like around age 12 and then my dad got me a drum kit, I think maybe the same year or maybe 13, I forget. Um, cause I was playing, cause I used to play a lot of rock band, um, the game that came out, which is kind of like mm -hmm. guitar hero. Yeah. You get like drum set and I used to just be like pretty good at the drums. So my mom saw that and she's like, maybe he's good at the real drums. So like, let's, so I took drum lessons for a bit. Um, it's like all like stuff that I did for not that long just did it for a short period of time yeah. but it was just exposing me to music and just different styles acoustic drums that sort of thing and then at 16 17 um well I think it was at 16 I met this this guy named Joe Wiggins and we were in the same Mr. choir class Wiggins yeah shout out to Joe Wiggins that's Dude, my boy it's getting dark in here I don't even think people can see us it's okay. As long as they get, as long as they really get like done. Watch the sun go down. And do, do, do. <laughs> so Joe Wiggins, he hit, you guys met him. What did he teach you? Just more fundamentals of something? No, the, the cool thing about Joe Wiggins was he was a music producer. Ah. And I didn't know that that was, I didn't know about that world at all. I didn't know people were making beats. Uh -huh. like, I just had no idea that that was a thing. So I'd go over to his house after school. He had a gym in his garage that we work We'd work out in and he'd be on Fruity Loops. He'd just be cooking up beats on his laptop. Uh. And I just naturally would just kind of watch like watch him cook up beats. And it wasn't even that I was trying to learn. It was just like naturally interesting to me. Just yeah. that you could do everything by yourself on your laptop. So I thought that was pretty cool. And so and he was actually pretty good back in the day. Mm. Um this was like 2012 2013 was he making more like hip-hop beats edm beats like what was he, he he was making more like house type stuff house yeah like edm gotcha gotcha with a little bit of like hip-hop infused into it mm. um so i thought it was pretty cool and then he had this app on his phone called i machine and it's pretty much just like a four by four like kind of like an npc but on your phone so you have individual squares and you can you can assign 
individual sounds to those squares. So you can add a kick to one square, a snare to another snare, hi-hat to another, and you can just make a beat in real time. And so I got the app on my phone, started playing around with it, and I was just doing that all the time. I remember I, I was, when I really, when I started doing that, I was, it was my first year in college. So this is like 2014, like the fall of 2014. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I was going to class and stuff, but I was just thinking about music all the time. This is the thing that like was consuming my mind. This was like the precursor to like what I was going to get into later in my life. Yeah. And I remember just laying on my bed, just like cooking up these beats with my headphones in and just, they weren't good, you know, but it was just <laughs> practice and it was just, yeah. just having fun. Um, so I started doing that and then I started uploading those beats to YouTube and it started getting views. I was like, man, this is pretty cool. Like I didn't even start out doing it for the money. Like I wasn't even making a dime when I first started. It was just like, here's a beat that I made on my phone, uploaded to YouTube and whoever likes it, like you can make a song to it. You can rap over it. You can sing over it, like whatever you want to do. So, um, what age were you when you started uploading? Like 15? I 16? was, when I first started up, I think the first beat that I ever uploaded, I think I was like 17 or 18 and yeah. it was a Drake type beat and it had like these horns and it had all this brass oh, and it was like okay. super anthony and it was actually like, cause I, I, I recently heard it. I found it like in the archives. I was like, this actually it wasn't too bad, you know, oh, like starting out. You think you're going to juice it up a little bit? Redo yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, that could be cool. Did you name revisit. it? What was the name of the song? Did you give it a nice um, title? Ricky's was, first song? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was definitely Drake type beat. Um, I forget what I named it, but I put it on YouTube, and it didn't do crazy numbers. It just, you know, just kind of just accumulating a little bit of views here and there. Sure. And then, and then, so I just kept doing that, and then I made this beat on my phone. I remember making it too. Like it was yesterday. I was sitting on my bed. It was probably like three or four in the afternoon. Um, I think like I left school or something like that. I was supposed to go to school. Well, I went to school, but then I left early because I just was thinking about music. <laughs> I was laying on my bed. That's what's up? Yeah, that's kind of the story of my life. Just <laughs> doing oh, what I'm passionate school. about. <laughs> yeah, and so um, got keep, back to the house. Going. I'm gonna turn this light on. Right there. All right. Keep going. Keep going. Um. But yeah, I got back home and then they added this uh, a sample feature into uh, to the app, to iMachine, where you could take a song, you could chop it up. And so I went on YouTube. I found this sample called Gold by Koala. I chopped it up, added some very basic drums, just a kick, a snare, some hi-hats. There wasn't even bass in it. There was no 808. And I made that. I uploaded it to YouTube. Uh, I forget what year it was. I think it was... I think it was 2014 that I uploaded the beat. So I uploaded the beat and then it just started to just do numbers, bro. Like, uh. like it, 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 it got to like 500 views what? and then like 500. Yeah. And then dude, like I get stoked when I get like 10 on mine. I'm like, yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah, dude. I remember literally just like being so excited that people were listening to my stuff. So it was like 500. Then it jumped to a thousand. And I was hanging out with the homies all the time. My homie Gabe Tevis had his own apartment. So I'd be at his house. We'd be in his room. And we'd just be, we were hanging out all the time because we went to school together and stuff. So we would carpool. We worked together briefly too. Mm. And so we'd just be hanging out in his room and I'd check my YouTube. And this specific beat was just blowing up like crazy. Like he did 500 views in 1,000. And then like three days later to be at like 2,000 views. And then three days later to be at 5,000. So I was like, man, there's something special going on here. Like, people are liking this beat. <laughs> and I wasn't even advertising it. I wasn't sending any links. I just put it up on YouTube. And and it just happened, huh? Yeah. Just what kind of beat was it? Did you already say it? Did you already say it? No, but I'll oh. play a little snippet. Oh, okay. Because I actually I'll, got it. Is on it on your YouTube? Because I can just put it. Um, I can link it for everybody. Yeah. It's yeah, I'll link, it, I'll link it for everybody. All right. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Um. But yeah, so it just kept gradually growing and people were hitting me up to buy it. And that's when I was like, holy crap, I could Damn. turn this into a business. I could actually sell beats. Yeah. You know, I could actually make a career out of this. 
Um, and so that was sort of the precursor to what would lead to the following years. So I uploaded the beat. Long story short, I leave the beat up and the beat gets to 700,000 views. Whoa, <laughs> my man. Dude, does YouTube start paying you at that point? Uh, How does that work? So is this is a million and then you start getting paid? Uh, so it it so I don't really know the the details about it, mm -hmm. but when I uploaded it, I didn't know about Google ads. Um, I didn't know about any of that stuff. I didn't get into that stuff later. Uh, but pretty much what's Google ads. What's that about? So Google ads is you make an account with Google. It's called Google AdSense. Uh -huh. And you pretty much come into agreement where you upload a video and they're going to play ads in the beginning of your, of your video at the end of your video or in the middle. And every time that they play an ad, they give you a percentage of that view time that the that the viewer is spending time on your video because they're getting exposed to the ad. And so if you have huh. if you have a lot of viewers, dude, I did not know that. Yeah, and that's good for you, dude. That's a way to capitalize a little bit. Yeah, but that didn't come till later. Like sure, sure. Like when, yeah, you did this all your own without ads. Yeah, yeah. So the beginning. That's awesome. Yeah, the beginning was no ads, and then I got into ads 2017. That's when. That's when I really learned about ads. I mean, it was still probably going on in 2014, like in the very beginning stages, but um, I didn't know about it, and I wish I did because I probably could have made a little bit more money. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I was just having fun. I wasn't consumed by how much money can I make. It was just I was making some money here and there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that's that started doing really well. And I was like, man people really like this beat and I just made it off my phone. Like I don't, I didn't even have a <clears throat> legit program that I was using. I wasn't even working on the laptop yet. It was just off my phone. So I was like, if, if I could do this off my phone, imagine what I could do with an, uh, a laptop and some speakers and headphones and, uh, like and plugins, a, key, a keyboard, a mini, something. yeah, a MIDI. Like just yeah. imagine if I had the whole setup. So I just started to really think about the possibilities and started to take it serious once I saw that people were liking my stuff. So I got a job at Amazon, uh, Amazon Warehouse. I was working in San Bernardino for like two months. It was just seasonal. It was just during Christmas. Uh -huh. And uh, saved up about two two grand. And then just literally in, took all that money and invested it back into my passion, which is music. You know, I bought a laptop. I bought a MacBook Pro for a thousand bucks. Yeah. Um, bought some speakers for 300 bucks. So it was 150 each for each speaker. And then I got Logic Pro and literally just started teaching myself was watching YouTube tutorials, uh, just trial and error, just having fun with it. Just like I was doing on the phone, you know, it started off as fun and it's always, it, well, we can get into that later, <laughs> but you know, yeah, yeah, when know money gets mean. involved, sometimes the fun is lost, I guess you yeah. could say, cause you kind of get caught up in the money. And stuff like that. So um, you still never got paid from YouTube then? Did you do you ever accumulate anything for that many views? Uh so with I vibes to, I I didn't mean to backtrack, but Oh no, it's cool. Yeah, like so I'm vibes curious. Yeah, so you're only gonna get paid for Google advertising when you put the advertisement on your video. Yeah. So I mean I could probably go back to that video and throw ads on it. Uh -huh. Um but back in that day or back in, during that time when when the beat the beats called vibes when that was first put put on uh to YouTube there was no ads on it so all the money i made was from people leasing the beat buying oh, the beat okay that sort of thing so that's how i was making money gotcha um, gotcha in the beginning stages and then so that that was cool how much would you lease it for um cuz i know some people who are getting into this may want to know how that works because people yeah. will screw you left and right yeah and so the way you could look at leases is like kind of like leasing a car uh -huh. so you lease it you don't own it but you can use it and you can benefit from it so the way that leases work at least from the knowledge that i have it gets way more way more detailed like once you get to once you get in the music industry and you're selling millions of records but on a low scale level yeah um pretty much a lease is like i'm going to i'm going to lease you the beat for 20 bucks and as the producer you make your own terms so you say i lease it to you for, this is what i would do but so you lease it for 20 bucks and then you can sell 
five thousand copies of your track. So you you pay twenty bucks, and say, and, and you could sell it two thousand times. If you sell it for a dollar, and you sell two thousand copies of your product, you have the potential to make two thousand dollars off of a song on a twenty dollar investment. Mm. So it's it's really a win win for the artist. But that's the thing. It's like you're gonna pay a small price for the lease, but it's up to you to accumulate. Not really accumulate, but to take your music as far as you want to go. You yeah. know, it, it's that. That's just. I, I guess I was, you know, I was pretty ignorant in the beginning stages, so I was pretty lenient. I learned later that that's actually doing that's a little too much because I'm only making twenty bucks, and an, and an artist can make two thousand bucks. Right. So you know, that's cool. Like I want everybody. I to see. Eat. So he, you, you lease out your beat. And then he takes your beat, he does whatever he wants, and then he sells it on his terms? Right. Yeah. Oh. But he doesn't own the beat. He so. doesn't own it. So do you get any residuals from what he sells? Um, so the way I was going about it was, excuse me, I didn't, that's kind of complicated, like royalties and contracts. Right. And that's a lot of like paperwork and a lot of signatures and stuff. So in the beginning stages, I really didn't care. It was just... I'm going to lease it to you and whatever you make, bro, keep it, you know, like if you make $2,000, that's there's, there's just too many people leasing the beat for me to keep up with hundreds of customers. Sure. I get what you mean. So it was just, you know, but now that I'm, now I'm realizing once people pass a certain threshold, you want to get into a percentage based sort of deal right, where right. someone leases it, we'll say for 50 bucks. How long do they get to lease it for? Um, like a, they, they pretty much can lease it until they hit the limit. So oh. if, if the, if the lease says that you can distribute 2000 copies and you distribute 2000 copies, then you have to renew the lease. I see. It's like, okay. it's like, okay. yeah. So you're constantly renewing leases, but at that point you would pretty much just like want to buy the beat or you would want to buy the track outs because you're, it, you've already proven that you're doing so well. With just this little lease, it, it's kind of it makes sense for uh, the customer, the artist, to purchase a, a lease that gives them more freedom. Gotcha. You know? What have you ever thought about, like giving it on, selling it, like on Beatport, something like that? Yeah, so it's I, like a buck, or like how iTunes does it. Yeah, I mean, I haven't really thought too much about iTunes. Um, yeah, they'll take you for everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You wouldn't see much, to be honest. Yeah, probably not. I, I kind of like the way you do it. You lease it and you have a consistent... But I would probably cut down on how much the other person can do with it. Yeah. I wouldn't give them like 2000 I'd be like, well, you can get ten, mm -hmm. And if it does good, then uh, we'll double it. But, you know, as it doubles, you double. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if that's greedy, but, you know... You have a chance to make good money and continue this without having any, any interruptions from, like, say, a nine-to-five job. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not to be greedy, but, you know, if it's something you really like to do. Yeah. That's very interesting, dude. I had no idea mm -hmm. you could do stuff like that. Yeah, and it, it's cool because um, as producers, you want to attract an artist that is going to take your production and take it to a whole nother level. That's the whole dream of a producer. I make a beat, this artist gets on the beat, writes an amazing song, and then they take it to a whole nother level. Because people, I mean, there's people out there that like to just listen to instrumentals, but songs is what people like. You know, they're hit records with lyrics on them and personality and an artist. And, um, you know, so I just think that's really cool. I like I like being in that, I like being a, in a producer situation where i help other people shine me personally uh because i'm kind of i don't know i'm kind of like a background dude i guess you could say i like to just yeah. help other people flourish and like give them the attention i'm not really a, an attention seeking person so well you're a producer yeah you're that's exactly what producers do yeah we're like kind of the dudes that hide in the shadows and yeah. which is cool especially for someone you know my personality it's kind of catered to my personality um yeah but I just, uh, I, I like the producer role and, um, 
I kind of lost my train of thought, but I forgot where we were at. But. No, we, we were talking about um, producing and how you started accumulating a lot more attention with this one particular song that you made. Yeah. And so it started to grow and grow and grow. What After it hit an X amount of time, where did you go from there? So you saw that you had something. Yeah. Then... With this one song, what where did you take it from there? Because you were working at Amazon, you were buying everything, you were starting to get set up. Mm-hmm. What happened after once you got everything? Did it get? Did you get more? Or did it calm down? Like where did it go from so there? So it got crazier. <laughs> it got crazier. <laughs> Things got crazy. <laughs> oh yeah. So I got the laptop, set up shop in this room, which is. Uh, the gym now, but it used to be bedroom, guest bedroom. Yeah. Um, set up shop in there, and then was just learning the program. Was just learning Logic, getting comfortable, transitioning from making beats with literally my fingertips to having a mouse, and you know playing on the MIDI keyboard and kind of just getting used to the whole computer setup. Yeah. So I started getting more comfortable with that, and was uploading beats to YouTube still, and. It was just pure. It was just, I wasn't doing it for the bread. I wasn't doing it for the money. It was just, I was making beats, um, just having fun and just getting, just getting better at my, better at my craft. You know, it was just, I was having fun with it. That's really what it was. And then, you know, kind of like years later, things, I, you know, started doing really well financially off of beats, but then I just got into this whole philosophical uh psychological kind of hell where it was like am i doing it for the money or am i doing it because i really believe in what i'm doing and i kind of came to this crossroads and i had to make some decisions in my life um Hmm. so i mean that's kind of that's kind of like down the conversation but right now uh or like currently um like in the conversation was just kind of like 2015 was just producing, was just, you know, getting used to cooking up on the laptop and um, just kind of progressively started making more and more money. It'd be like one month I'd make a hundred bucks. Then three months later, I'd be making 500 bucks. And mm-hmm. then it got to a point where I was making like 600 bucks every single month. And it Dude, was just it's not bad. Yeah. And I still had a, I was working at in and out I was still work at in and out if you're <laughs> listening to this right now, but uh, it's all right. Yeah. But, uh, uh you know, uh, uh, in the past I was working at in and out and quit because the music was doing, I was doing well in the music. I didn't really need the job anymore. Um, but yeah, so pretty much the story was I started off on the phone, uh, went to the laptop and then just started getting good at the laptop, started accumulating more and more money, selling beats, making connections with different artists, uh, kind of building a resume on YouTube, building subscribers and man i changed my producer name so many times it's not even funny dude like yeah. i've had at least 20 producer names like what what name are you now currently so my current name and it took forever to, for me to realize this but it's just my real name which is just ricky vela just i started off as ricky vela did you go with vanilla vela no, but I probably should have. <laughs> Vanilla Bella. The beats Ooh, are sweet. <laughs> the beats are sweet. <laughs> but so I started off as Ricky Vela, and then I forget the order in which the names came, but was it, was going by Vela at one point, then Vanish, then Rick Vanish, and then huh. um, was going by 9-6, which actually I was going by 9-6 when I was doing the most well financially selling beats. Cause I think I guess people like that name for some reason they and I thought it was kind of cool. Yeah. Um. It was the year I was born, '96, and so. Uh, you think I, you'd ever go back to that? I don't think so. I think I have no. too many identity uh, issues. Crisis. Yeah. Yeah. Identity crisis, and you know, if I go by nine six, it's yeah. like a whole new thing I have to identify with. It's just like a whole. And then you start you start losing people at that point. Like where where's that one guy that made that one song vibe? Right. He's nine six. He's now this. Like right. Then you start right. people just start giving up. It's like, dude, I yeah. don't even know where he is anymore. That's a good point. His name changes so much. Yeah, that's actually a good point because I built 
I built my YouTube as one name and then my indecisiveness would I would choose a new name and then people didn't know who to look up and they didn't know how to find the beat again. So they're all in my comments like, do you know where this guy went? Do you know how I can find this beat? Uh-huh. And it just caused a lot. And I have so many freaking emails because <laughs> I just changed my producer name. You know, I wanted my email to yeah. kind of uh, like, cater to my producer name. What I gathered from is people do enjoy the hunt of music and like and finding new um, like podcast material, or whatever. But um, I know that if you don't make it simple for people, if you make it so complex, then mm-hmm. people just give up. And right. that could be there can be some people that could really all it took for one is to tell somebody else and that could it just keeps booming like word of mouth like you said yeah um so yeah if you keep changing your name i i could see how that'd be kind of frustrating for some people oh yeah yeah it would frustrate and for me you too yeah yeah for you too it's like damn man come on yeah exactly <laughs> like who do i want to be today <laughs> yeah exactly and so i think there's power in making decisions where this is my name and I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to stick with it to the end. And so, yeah. and I and I get kind of like metaphysical with things and philosophical with things like names and how things look and just the aesthetic of a name. But my name was given to me without me putting any conscious effort into it. You know, it was, your name is almost divine. You didn't choose your name. Your name was given to you by the universe and, and by just a higher force. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what I believe. And so I think there's power in your name, everybody's name, you know, because it's the one thing that you didn't choose for yourself. And of course, people later in life can change their name and stuff. But really, your name is divine. The name that you are given, there's there's a lot of power in your name. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't realize that till literally recently. You know, I was just changing my name, trying to find myself, trying to identify with something. And I just realized, like, my name's freaking... My name is cool, you know, like I yeah. like my name. I was always not embarrassed, but, you know, my real name is Richard. That's my birth name is Richard. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of had identity issues like, why is everyone calling me Ricky if my name is Richard? You know, that's like yeah. someone naming their kid Kyle and then they just start calling him John. It's like, why don't you just name me John? <laughs> well, you you're, know? you're the second, right? Your dad's Richard. Uh, you named that after well, your dad? Yeah, but my dad, uh, my dad's middle name is Jason. Mine's Joaquin Carlos. Ooh, um, dude, imagine if you went by Joaquin Carlos, dude. Yeah. It's got a little sexy flair to it, dude. It, Not yeah. gonna lie. It's, it's Joaquin it's, Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah. spicy. Yeah. and, and That's my, cool. Yeah, I, I think Joaquin Carlos is cool. Um, huh. But I, I recently added my own twist to it, which was I was recently going by Keen Charles, K-E-E-N, and then Charles, uh, which is... Huh. Joaquin, which is the last half of Joaquin, so you get Keen, and then Charles in English, or or Carlos in English is Charles, oh. and so I took Keen Charles, and I was like, oh, that's kind of unique, like, dude, you're such an artist. Oh, thank Only you, an man. artist would think of some <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> but that's me. Like, I like to go into layers and like, yeah, yeah. And I would, I would never have put that together. My when I came up with mine, mine was simple. I won't tell anybody because I like to keep it that way. But mm-hmm. are you talking about Herb? Yeah, well, Herb is officially yeah my last name. Yeah. But at, all growing up, everyone was like, "What's up, Herb? What's up, Herb?" And it just that's how it just stuck like that. Yeah. I actually prefer it. Like yeah. you, I don't. I don't like my first name. It's okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. But whatever. But I get what you mean. Like when you start being creative, it's always like your little twist to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's cool, man. I would have never have put that all together. Yeah. And I think herb is cool because people think of herb and like associated with marijuana, like yeah. the spoken herb, you know, but mm-hmm. that's literally your last name. It's not something that you conjured up. It's right. not. Yeah. It's like it was given to you and you can add your own kind of unique twist onto your own name that was given to you, you know? Yeah. So I, I I think your last name is dope. Oh, I think thanks, it's cool. Man. That's herb with an E, folks, not an H. With yeah. An e. Herb. Yeah. Everybody thinks it's herb. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, oh, it's herb? No. Herb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's dope, man. So now you're on just using your name now. Yeah. And just you, going you happy with that now? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, Good. I'm, Good. I'm cool with just, uh, just Ricky Vela. Um, it's my name, you know, and, and I also want to be as transparent as possible. I want to be an artist where... 
I'm not hiding behind a name. I'm not hiding behind a producer name. I'm not hiding behind. I just wanted to, I just want to be a raw human being that just makes raw art and people connect with me on just a human raw level. Yeah. That's, that's, that's how, that's what makes me feel comfortable in my skin when I'm just being completely transparent. And so when I would choose a producer name, it was like, yeah, it's just a name, but it's not being fully transparent. You know, I'm kind of hiding behind a name, kind of hiding behind a curtain. Mm -hmm. And so just by just me, me going by my real name, it's like everything's on the table. This is who I am. This is what I make. And everything that I make, you can associate with my real name. You know, I'm not yeah. I'm not hiding behind anything. So, you know, there's there's people that are successful that don't use a real name like Travis Scott or, uh, you know, Lady Gaga or something yeah, like that. Dude. And, you know, do everybody on like pretty much 90 percent of the edm world there's a whole different name yeah i and mean there are some that use their real names but they're always like there's aliases and stuff like that yeah which is cool like, yeah yeah like people make it work you know mm -hmm. um i think it's cool that I, I think you know fisher right the dj fisher yeah yeah one uh, of my favorites he's so ill bro he's, yeah he's quite the character too man it, he, yeah he, he gets it going he gets the party going yeah his live uh performances are just so lit dude yeah. like you could just tell he's just passionate about what he yep. what he's doing i was just gonna say that he really loves what he does yeah he, and he, i think his last name is actually fisher i think that's his actual like birth name yeah so i i think that's cool and and um you know he's making it happen uh shout out to fisher yeah shout, shout out to, to losing it <laughs> that song that's gets me going so good bro. dude oh it's, my it's probably one of the most simplest songs i've ever heard yeah but whatever he did to I don't know. It's, it's just something about it. Right. Yeah. It's, he did it right. Yeah. It's the minimalism. Mm -hmm. It's the it's the proper sound selection. You could tell every sound was every sound goes really well together. And just the arrangement of it, the mm, the build the up. Flow. Yeah, that like the horns. Just that song specifically. I I don't I don't you know, I'm not a I don't know everything about Fisher. I really only know uh losing it and yeah. there's another song he has. I forget. But mm -hmm. um, but losing it, I really like try to I because it's a hit, you know. It's like a really big song. People really love that song, mm -hmm. and me as someone that really loves music, I like to dissect things. I kind of become a scientist when it comes to music, and I try to understand what people did so I could apply it to my music. And mm -hmm. I was listening to losing it, and you know, it it's you can break things down to a certain point, but then it reaches a point where you can't explain it. It just feels good. <laughs> yeah yeah the song just feels it just good it feels good yeah it just feels well, good well that's probably what people feel about that one song you did vibe that yeah kind of blew you up is just something about what you did struck a lot of chords with people yeah that's impressive dude i hope you know how like it's pretty oh. astonishing yeah thank you man not many people can get there there's mm -hmm. some there and that's why i like talking to you about this because there's a lot of people trying to do what you're doing yeah and there's a lot of music like so much music where you're just like i don't even know where to begin right to start looking for whatever this and that but mm -hmm. somehow you stuck out yeah that's impressive yeah and you know and i'm really just an average joe i'm really like every, they all are they yeah. all start with average joe like every like yeah. the people that you love the, the the especially like the artists that you love and the work that you admire by them they all started somewhere. You all, you, like, everybody that's great has to start off at somewhere. The bottom. At the bottom. No one is great from Jump Street. So you can't be discouraged if you suck in the beginning because that's part of the process. You're not supposed to be amazing in the beginning. It's really, you're just supposed to have fun doing it. And the fun is is kind of the, the forcing function that carries you to become great. Because if you don't have fun doing what you're doing, you're never going to become great. It's just going to be a chore and it's going to be something that you don't really want to do. Yeah. But if something's fun to you, you're going to learn all you can about it. You're just going to do it. And that's really, that's really how you get good at something is just doing it mm -hmm. all the time. Not thinking too much, just having fun. Letting one thought lead to another. Letting one thing just, just connect. You know, it's, if you, I'm a music producer, so I can really speak for producers. Yeah. And so, you know, say you start something. Say you start a beat or something, and it's like, okay, well, what if I do this? 
and in trying to make that idea come to life, you're going to learn the tools along the way. Oh, I want to make my 808s glide. Oh, this is what that tool does. This is how I make the 808 glide. Uh -huh. And then you can apply those tools to different things. And next thing you know, five years later, you're good at, at making beats because one thing led to another and you just experimented with the tools and, and you learned the program. And now you can make any idea that you have in your head come to life just by having fun and experimenting. Yeah. So I think experimentation is super huge. Um, YouTube videos are good, of course, but just getting in the trenches and just having fun and letting your mind wander and just being curious about, man, what can I, what can I really do in this program? You know, yeah. like how can I really push it? That's going to carry you. That's going to make you great. That's the thing that's, that's going to show, you know, you're, you're, you're going to look back on your, on whatever it is. Like if you're, if you paint, or whatever thing that you do from the moment you started to, we'll say like five years later, your curiosity and your experimentation is going to be the bridge that, that gaps those two together. Yeah. Um, I didn't really explain that right. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, dude, you explained it in the way that you needed in your way to explain it. But I think it's good what you're talking about getting in the trenches and, uh, for me, what I've tried to do more and more is kind of lay off YouTube and stop going to it for every little hiccup I have yeah. when it comes to, um, man, just trying to learn all this audio in face and trying to record. And it mm -hmm. took a while, but then I stopped going on there and I just, I, one day to figure out the video, I just, I was like, well, let me see how this turns out. Yeah. And that's how I got the first video to record. Mm -hmm. And everything linked up i had to link this up i had to figure out how to mute things live mm -hmm. that was giving me feedback within the recording like right sooner or later like you said if you just keep going to youtube for everything you're really not being creative right you're being somebody else's creative right yeah you know so for me i stopped going i'm just like all right let me turn this button let me push this in and this mixer that i got took forever to figure out mm -hmm. for a while it's like it wouldn't even give me feed it wouldn't even record yeah and i had to go over here and push a button i was like damn yeah <laughs> sometimes it's that i always easy. took this shit back i was so frustrated i was like i can't get anything linked in and then i realized oh i gotta push these buttons and i just started pushing shit and it worked out yeah and um that yeah that's a great life quote just start pushing shit <laughs> just start pushing shit man yeah really even like, when you're taking cars apart like wow well, See how it turns out, man. And if yeah. not, there's always somebody else who could put it back together. But, you know, that's how you learn. That's how you get smarter with shit. Right. And you always have to remember it's just stuff. And, like, it's just mm -hmm. a computer. Like, you you can figure it out. Right. Yeah. You know, you really, really can. For yeah. YouTube, I think you should get the basics. Um, all right. This is your setup. But mm -hmm. after that, you need to learn the controls on your own. Mm -hmm. Do a recording, see how it sounds, go back. Kind of like how you probably did. Like, right. all right, let me see how this turns out. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, I figured out how to record. Yeah. I figured how to layer stuff. Right, yeah. You know? So I think, I think it's great what you're doing, man. Yeah. I always hear you, well, when I used to live here with you, man, you're in there 24-7. Your ears oh, yeah. hurt ever at all? You got um, ringing in there? No ringing, not yet. No? <laughs> Dude, enjoy that, man. I got ringing in mine. It sucks. Does it's it? A bitch. What What do you think it came from, just listening to a lot of music? Music? No, not even that. I think mine's uh, very stress-induced. Mm. Mine, uh, when I don't think about it, it's not. I don't hear anything. And then when I get stressed out, amped up, mm -hmm. it's like... Oh, man. It's like, fuck. Yeah. So, yeah. it's all good, though. Yeah, I wear earplugs now, and... I'm a lot more mindful. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, you gotta take care of, uh... The body parts you have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because you only get... You either have a pair or you have one, you know? <laughs> That's so, true. You so don't get three unless you get a kidney transplant. Yeah. But some things are not replaceable, like your ears, so... Mm -hmm. It's, um... I'm super mindful of that. Uh, because I like things loud. I think every music lover loves to fill oh, the bass yeah, and loves do. to hear those high frequencies, but... Uh, I love quality more than I love volume of something. And so as a producer, it's very important that when you're producing to not blow your ears off because you will get ear fatigue. And yeah. that is a real thing. You're going to really hear. Is. Like if you blast your ears off the first hour 
everything after that is just downhill because you're hearing things muffled. You just completely redlined your ears. So what I like to do is I only like to play it loud it when I'm kind of listening back to the track. When I'm when I'm working on a beat, I listen not quiet, but I listen at a pretty steady level. I listen to where it's not gonna blow my ears off. But right. then when I wanna play it back and really enjoy it, feel the bass, feel the kick, then I'll play it loud. But that's only for like a minute. And then, yeah. you know, then I'll go back to kind of like moderate levels. Um so that that advice is really mostly for people that work with sound and frequencies and stuff like that because if you're not hearing the sounds how they should be heard uh you're not gonna make the right decisions and and yeah. if you're a producer it's you you're everything is based on if you can make the right decision sonically you All know right. um yeah if you can't hear it, dude coming out just sound like somebody scratching a chalkboard yeah like, oh, that sounds good <laughs> yeah and then you're and then you're deluded and you think it sounds a certain way and it's just it's just a whole mess you know yeah um, damn so but, where, are you, where are you at now with everything you still making a lot of music are you still yeah um, i'm i'm completely leasing consumed. beats or um i'm not leasing beats i mean i have beats that are up for lease uh-huh. uh but i took a break from leasing beats because I love writing songs too. That's a big passion of mine is writing lyrics and writing songs. And instead of being the producer, actually being the artist, you know, getting on the microphone and actually singing or rapping the lyrics that I write. Uh, so I'm actually working on an album right now. The album's called candy for breakfast. Mm. And, uh, it's just a culmination of vibes, just different vibes. I'm I'm the type of person that I'm never going to be boxed in. I'm never going to just make one type of music. I'm never just going to do one thing. We're human beings. We're unlimited creatures. We can think one thing one day and think differently the next day. Yeah. And I think boxing yourself in mentally and just saying that you just do one specific type of thing is very... Uh, soul destroying you know it's one of those things where you just box yourself in and you have so much that you're interested in and so much that you want to do but you put yourself in this mental box to the point where you feel bad or you feel weird if you make something out of the ordinary so so my first album is going to be called candy for breakfast and it's pretty much letting the world know uh i'm unconventional and I'm going to make music that feels good to me, that sounds good to me. I don't care if it's a country record. I don't care if it's a rap record. If it feels good to me when I click play and, it, and the frequency has hit my ears and it brings me joy and it, and it, 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 it enhances my experience of life, then I'm going to go with that. And I'm going to push that out to the people and I'm going to give that to the world uh, because all I can really infer is what I like. You yeah. know, it's hard to infer what other people like. It's hard to know what other people like and what other people love. But the cool thing about life is that you know what you love as an individual. You can feel it. You know when you love something. You know when you like something. And so that is sort of the thing that I use to navigate life is do I really love it? You know, if I'm the creator of something, if I'm the producer of something, I have to make sure that I love it. And if I don't love it, then I'm never going to put it out. Yeah. Um, because I'm just here to create things that I love and I, and, and I'm pretty certain that if I love it, that other people will love it too. But you have to be certain that you really do love it and you're not just feeding your ego. It's not, um, like a subjective point of view. It's mm -hmm. like, this is, I really enjoy this from like, even if I wasn't me and I was somebody else, I would still enjoy this kind of yeah. approach, you know? Um, so yeah, working on the, uh, the uh, album called Kenny for Breakfast, just a culmination of just different, just different vibes. Like one track, I have a, I have a track that's kind of like more folky. Then I got some acoustic stuff. Then I got some really de depressing, dark stuff. Uh -huh. And it's just, it really just shows who I am as a person. You know, sometimes I feel really depressed and dark yeah. and I'm not going to hide that because it's not, because it's not what is selling like i don't give a i don't care <laughs> yeah i'm yeah. gonna make i'm gonna express myself and i'm gonna make things that 
I'm really going through because I know there's other human beings that go through that same stuff. Yeah. And if you're just making all this happy music, no one's happy all the time. That's no. that's ridiculous. You know, people life is kind of just this oscillating thing where sometimes you feel really great, sometimes you feel amazing and then the next day you feel depressed, some days you feel anxious. And so I, this album I really want it to be a showcase of all human emotions just the whole spectrum of the things that I felt in my life, the thoughts that I think, and to just be completely transparent and completely vulnerable. Yeah. And, um, and I learned that from my favorite artists, you know, someone like Kanye West that I really, he inspires me a lot. And I've mm -hmm. learned to just be as transparent with your art as possible because that's what's, that's what's important. Yeah. You know, is just being a real human being and um and just showing that you're a real human being you know dude that's dope man super dope yeah thank you when do you think that album's gonna be done well three months ago i said it would be around this time uh -huh. and now i'm saying it's three months later so uh do you know do you have a set amount of tracks you're looking to put on like six eight ten uh, I'm shooting. F I want it to be more than ten. Ten. I think anything less than ten um, is not really a full experience, in my opinion. It's kind of EP-ish, and there's people that will make that work. But you know, I want to give people a, a whole experience from beginning to end. I don't want it to just be um, just track after track. I want it to be cohesive, and yeah. I want to give people uh, just a good body of work. You know, nice. and yeah, I think yeah. anything less than 10 is a little too less. So going for plus 10, but I think like less than 13. So between 10 and 13 tracks. Gotcha. I think that's kind of like a good, a good place to, to sit. Um, yeah, just, that's great. Yeah. Just working on it all the time. Literally. Like that's all I do. If I'm not hanging out with my girlfriend, if I'm not at work, if I'm not contemplating my life and, and <laughs> thinking about why I exist, <laughs> Then uh, sure. I'm, I'm working on my art, uh, working on just giving. That's essentially what I'm doing is I just want to give back to people. You know, I don't care about money. I don't have an affinity for materialistic things. I don't give like I really don't care. I just the only reason I would want money is to build more of my vision and to give more to humanity and to just give people a greater experience of life. That's mm -hmm. what is valuable. The ideas, the visions that you have in your head, that is what is valuable. Cars, you know, are not valuable. Like these things that people put value on, it's just not that important. It's not inspiring. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just the type of person. It's just how I am for this is who I am. It's just my soul. But yeah. I can't just be good. You know, I don't it's, it's not good enough for just for me to have my own little chunk of freedom. I need to make something that brings freedom and, and gives, uh, brings joy to a lot of people. I'm, I'm doing this for humanity. I'm, I'm making things for everybody. Yeah. Uh, and that's my approach, you know, and, and I just want to inspire people. That's really all I want to do. But the first step to inspiring somebody is to be truthful, transparent, and honest in mm -hmm. anything that you do and to just show that you're a human and, and to just show that it's okay to be weird. <laughs> yeah. I'm the ultimate weirdo. You know, <laughs> it's like, okay I'm, to be, uh, you know, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to burn bridges. You're going to, yeah, you're, you're going to not make everyone happy. Um, and you're, like you said, it's okay to be weird a little bit. Yeah. I mean, please go outside. Outside <laughs> is beautiful. Don't sit behind your computer all the time or yeah you know go and talk to people be of interest and um i think what you're telling a lot of hopefully a lot of younger people who are getting into this realize is it, it's a lot of work yeah it, it's not you know you went out you got a job you got things you needed to start like we all did because we were super passionate about it yeah, and I think that's great what you're doing, man. Oh, keep appreciate that, it. Keep it up. Yes, and Russ has been supporting since day one. Uh huh. We're gonna play this interview back, <laughs> or this pot not interview, but this podcast, uh, in three years, and I'm never gonna forget the people that supported. Yeah, dude. 
never. Like, I could never forget who was there for me from day one. Uh, yeah, so we'll play this back in two or three years, and everybody that supported me from the jump, they're going to flourish as well, and mm. I'm going to make sure that that everybody's eating, you know, because like I said, it's not good enough for me for me to just eat. Everybody that cares about me, everybody that supported me is going to eat as well. Nice. You know. Hey, well, I appreciate that. That's not m- never my intentions, but it's very sweet of you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And, um, you know, thanks for coming on here, man. I really, um, I, I, I've always liked your music, man. We've made oh, songs together. You. It's been a lot of fun. I still play on the audio version. I think I'm going to start linking it too. I still play that song we made, Nomad. Oh, and, yeah. And a lot of people are like, dude, what is that track? What is that? And I, people I send them it. my way and I send them your way. Mm-hmm. And, and they like it, man. It's, it's it's good. Yeah. So And that you, was just the first track. You definitely got it. You definitely yeah. got something, dude. Yeah, thank you, man. Yeah. And we definitely make a good, because you have a great ear for music, too. We make a good collaboration team, Yeah, you know. And you come from the EDM world. I'm more of the hip-hop. But like I said, I'm not, I don't limit myself. Just let's make a track that sounds fire. When we click play, <laughs> this is what we want to hear. Yeah. You know, you should make something that you want to exist in the world. Don't wait on other people to make things that you want to exist or that are going to excite you. You take the initiative and you make the things that y- you know that you would be excited about. Yeah. And um, that's kind of just, that's my approach to things. But yeah, I appreciate Absolutely. you uh, yeah, having man. me on the podcast, man. Absolutely, man. Thanks for coming on. I know it. First times are always like, oh, what do I say? What do I do? But we're already an hour deep. So yeah. It, it goes by a lot quicker than people think. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I'm just, uh, time flies by when you're being honest and, yeah. and being truthful, you know, I just being mean. Well, you, you got, you got a lot of, um, good knowledge and good, uh, uh, uh experience for those coming into it and trying to figure it out. Yeah. Um, which is good, man, because there's a lot of young people who are wanting to do and they're kind of scared. Like, where do I start? Right. You know, what do I use? I mean, like I said, I mean, don't use YouTube for everything, mm-hmm. but obviously YouTube is where <laughs> people yeah. are listening. It's a good starting point, but like you said, you need to turn it off and just start messing around. Right, yeah. And that's how you start finding your sound, being creative, mm-hmm. and um, yeah. Well, keep it up, man. I Do you have it. a website or, or where anybody can find you? Uh, yeah, so you can. Uh, I have a YouTube channel. It's just Ricky Vela, R I C K Y space V E L A, V as in Victor. And okay. I should be the first one that pops up. Sweet. Um, I have a few beats that are up right now for Lease. If you like them, you're welcome to lease them. Uh, I have my email in the description. Um, yeah, it's pretty easy to find me. I don't have Instagram right now because it's. A distraction in my opinion so i'm kind of fair enough yeah getting rid of distractions but i'll probably be back on instagram and my 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 well my instagram was before i disabled it was at ricky vela so okay. uh yeah you can find me there in the future all right yeah find him on youtube i will link i will link everything for you guys for everybody so don't worry i definitely gonna link that one song that you that started it all Okay. But is there a song right now you've been listening to? I always like to leave with some sort of new music for people to check out. Um, is there like a song, an artist that's usually that's a, a song, question. a song that's really grabbed you lately. Yeah, let me look in my music library. Um, yeah. I lo- I've been really loving the song called I Wanted You to Stay on the Other Side. It's by Summer Heart. Okay. Um, Summer Heart, how it sounds. How yeah, it sounds, how so like spell it. Yeah, summer like summer in July, and then your heart, like a pumping heart. Okay. Um, and it's a dope. It's just cool. Just check it out, okay. and I think you'll enjoy it. Yeah. All right, folks, check it out. Summer Heart. What was the song? Um, I uh, I, I I wanted you to stay on the other side. I wanted you to stay on the other side by Summer Heart. Mm-hmm. Check it out. Ricky, thank you so much. Thank you, Er. Uh, always a pleasure. Good seeing you, man. Likewise. And as always. Thank you for listening. This is Herb. Peace. Peace.